live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and Intel, along with its ecosystem partners. Welcome back, this is theCUBE's seventh year of coverage of the mega AWS reInvent show here in Las Vegas. Somewhere between 60 and 65,000 up and down the street. Uh, we are here in the Sands Convention Center. I am Stu Minnan, and my co-host for this segment is Justin Warren, and happy to welcome back to the program one of our CUBE alumni, Jesse Rothstein, who is the co-founder and CTO of ExtraHop. Jesse, great to see you. Thank you for having me again. Ah, so uh, we caught up with you at AWS Reinforce uh, not that long ago in Boston, uh, where it rains more often in Boston than it does in Vegas, uh, and it's raining here in Vegas, which is a little odd. Strangely, it is raining here in Vegas, but uh, you know, Reinforce it at the end of June in Boston was the, the first AWS security conference. Great energy, great size. We, we had a lot of fun at that show. Yeah, so uh, Dave Vellante was one of the ones that reinforced, and he actually came out of the three-hour keynote uh, yesterday with Andy Jassy and said, I'm a little surprised there wasn't as much security talk. You know, have we, you know, we, it's not like we can remove security from the discussion of cloud. It is, you know, one of the top issues here. So I want to get your viewpoint. Did, were we missing something? Well, is it just there? I, I know this as you? well. Yeah. Um, I think perhaps they're saving some announcements for, you know, reinforce coming again in June in Houston this year. Uh, there was at least one announcement around um, IAM Access Analyzer, as I recall. But generally the announcements seem to focus in, in some other areas, you know, some big announcements around data warehousing, uh, you know, for uh, federated uh, Redshift queries, I think, and uh, some big announcements around machine learning tooling, like uh, the, the SageMaker Studio. But uh, I, I noticed that as well. Not as many security announcements. Yeah, you never know. Werner still has his keynote uh, tomorrow, so uh, we're, we're sure there's still be another 50 or 100 announcements uh, before <laughs> the week is done. Uh, Extra Hop uh, also has some new this week, so well, why don't we make well, sure? Well, first I can assure you that yeah. cloud security is not solved. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not a solved problem. In fact. Uh, Unfortunately, despite uh, record spend year after year after year, uh, we still continue to see record numbers of compromises and, and data breaches that are published. Uh, I think cloud security in particular uh, remains a challenge. There, there's a lot of energy there and I, I think a lot of attention. People recognize it's a problem, but we're, we're dealing with massive uh, cybersecurity skill, skill shortages. It's, it's very hard to find people with the, the expertise needed to, to really secure these, these workloads. Uh, we're dealing with more sophisticated attackers. Uh, I think in many cases, attackers with nation state sponsorship, which is, is scary. You know, five or 10 years ago, we didn't see that quite as much. More cyber criminals, fewer nation, nation states. Uh, and of course, we're seeing an ever increasing attack surface. So Extra Hop's right, right in the mix here, and we focus on network detection and response. I'm a huge believer in the power of network security, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk more about that. Uh, at Reinforce last June, we announced XDROP RevealX Cloud, which is a, a SaaS offering using AWS's recent VPC traffic mirroring capability. So the idea is all you do is you mirror a copy of the traffic using VPC traffic mirroring to our SaaS, and then we provide all of the sophisticated detection, investigation, and response capabilities as a product. So that's hosted. You still do the work of investigating it, but you know, we provide the, the entire offering around that very low C, uh, TCO, uh, very turnkey capabilities. And of course, uh, it wouldn't be a, a, security, a modern day security offering if we didn't leverage very sophisticated machine learning uh, to detect suspicious behaviors and, and potential threats. But this is something I think we do better than anybody else in the world. So walk us through some of what the machine learning actually does, because I feel that the machine learning and AI is kind of hitting peak, peak hype cycle maybe. I, you know, I almost can't say it with a straight face because it's, it's so overused, yeah. but, but the, it is absolutely real, that's where the state of the art is. Um, machine learning allows us to recognize uh, behaviors, and behaviors are very important because we're looking for post-breach behaviors and, and indicators of compromise. So there, there are a million ways that you can be breached. The, so the attack surface is absolutely enormous. But there's actually a relatively small number and a relatively tractable set of post-breach behaviors that attackers will do once you're compromised. And I think more and more organizations are realizing that it's a matter of when and not if. 
So what we've done is we've built uh, the, the machine learning behavioral models so that we can detect this, these suspicious behaviors. In some cases, we have uh, an entire team of threat researchers that are simulating attacks, simulating pen testing tools, lateral movement, exfiltration, so we can train our models on these behaviors. Some, in some cases, we're looking for very specific indicators of compromise, but in, in just about all cases, this results in very high quality detections. And because just detections alone are completely insufficient, XTRAP is built on top of an entire analytics platform so that you're always one or two clicks away from being able to determine, is this something that requires immediate attention and requires kind of an incident response scenario? Uh, one of the capabilities that we announced here at this show is automated response. So we integrate with the AWS uh, API so that we can automatically isolate and quarantine a workload that's behaving suspiciously. Uh, you know, in cybersecurity, some, some attacks are low and slow, but some are very fast and destructive. And for the fast and destructive ones, you move faster than a human's ability to, to respond, so we need that automated response. Uh, and we also announced a, a continuous packet capture capability for forensics, because sometimes you need the packets. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah that's, that's a response. Um, that's a, a lot of different things that we would actually like to bring the, the capability a little bit earlier than that so that we don't actually get breached. It's great that we can detect it and say, great, we've got the indication of compromise and we can react very, very quickly to that. So Are you able to help us get one step ahead so, of the cyber crimes? So I'll actually be a little contrarian on that. Mm. I'm going to say that organizations have really been investing in protection and prevention for the last decade or two. You know, this strategy is called defense in depth and, and you should do it, everybody should, that's a best practice. But um, you know, with defense in depth, you have lots of layers of defense at the perimeters. You know, keep, keep the attackers out of the perimeter, uh, gateways, firewalls, proxies. Lots of layers of defense at the endpoint. You know, keep attackers off of my, my workstations, my, insta my um, instances, my, my laptops, things like that. But you know, I think, again, organizations have learned that attackers can fire you know, a thousand arrows, or a hundred thousand arrows, or a hundred million arrows, and only one needs to land. Yeah. So, the, the pendulum has really swung toward detection response. How do I know if I'm breached right now? How can I detect it quickly? The industry average dwell time is, is over three months, which is unacceptably long, and we always hear about cases in the news that are three years or more. And uh, you know, what I like to say is if it were three weeks, that would be too long. If it were three days, that would be too long. If, if it were three hours, I think you could do a lot of damage in three hours. You know, if you can start getting this down to three minutes, well, maybe you know, we, can, we can limit the blast radius in three minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So, Jesse, you, you brought up the uh, ever-growing surface area of attack, and one of the big themes we've seen at the show is AWS is pushing the boundaries of where they touch customers. Uh, you know, I, I said if Amazon is the everything store, AWS is becoming the everywhere cloud. <laughs> Outposts, uh, from Amazon's perspective, they said Outpost just extends their security models. Um, I see, I hear a lot of the ecosystem talking about how they are leveraging that and integrating with that. Does Outpost or any of their other edge solutions impact what, what your customers and your <laughs> solutions are doing? So it's funny you say that. I, I was wondering that myself. Um, my, my expectation is that Outposts are a good thing because they have the same security controls right. that, that we expect to see in, in any uh, AWS kind of VPC enabled environment. Where I haven't gotten full clarification is do we have the full capabilities that we expect with VPCs? Uh, in particular, you know, VPC traffic mirroring, which is the, the capability that was announced at Reinforce that I'm so excited about because it allows us to actually analyze and inspect that traffic. Uh, another capability that I think slipped in under the radar but it was announced um, yesterday is VPC ingress routing. Uh, this doesn't really affect ExtraHop that much, but as a, as a network head, I like seeing Amazon enable organizations to kind of make their own choices around uh, how they want to inspect and, and, and control traffic. And with VPC ingress routing, it actually allows you to run inline devices between your VPCs, which previously you weren't able to do. So I think that one slipped in under the radar. Maybe you have to be a network head like me to, to really appreciate it. But I, I'm seeing more flexibility and not less, and that's something that I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased with. That's one thing that we definitely see with cloud is that, that explosion of customer choice and all of these different methods that are available and Amazon just keeps pushing the boundaries on how quickly they can release new features. What does that mean for ExtraHop in being able to keep up with the pace of change that customers are, are using all of these different features? Um, that's, that's a good question. I, I, I think that's just the reality, so I don't think about what it means or, or doesn't mean that that's just the way it is. Uh, in general though, I've seen this trend toward 
more flexibility. Uh, you know, VPC traffic mirroring, to use that example again, was one of the few examples I could point to a year ago as something really useful and valuable that I could do on premises, you know, for diagnostic purposes, for forensics purposes, that for some reason wasn't available in public cloud, at least not easily. And uh, you know, with, with this announcement six months ago and, and, and going to general availability, Amazon finally uh, ticked that one off. And, and we're starting to see the rest of the public cloud ecosystem move that way as well. So uh, I'm seeing more flexibility and, and, and more control. Uh, maybe that comes with a, a, a pace of innovation, but I, I think that's just the world we live in. Yeah, and you, you did mention that uh, that customers are having to adopt with this new new regime of look. We need to look at compromise. Can we detect if we've been compromised? Can we do it quickly? We have a lot of tools that we're now are being made available, like like egress uh, routing, but uh, sorry, ingress routing. Um, but what does that mean for customers in, in changing their mindset? One of the themes that we had from the keynote yesterday was transformation. So do customers need to just transform the way they think about security? Um, yes and no. You know, certainly customers who are used to uh, a certain set of on-prem on tool, tool set, tool chain, can't necessarily just shoehorn that into their public cloud workloads. Um, but on the other hand, I, I, I think that public cloud workloads have, have really suffered from, from an op opacity problem. It's very difficult to see what's going on. You know, it's hard to sift through all those logs. It's hard to get the visibility that, that, that you expect. And I, I think that the, the cybersecurity uh, tool set, tool chain, has been um, you know, pretty fragmented. You know, there are a lot of vulnerability scanners. There are a lot of kind of like API inspectors and recommendation engines. But I, I think the industry is, is still really trying to figure out what, what this means. So I, I'm seeing a lot of innovation and I'm seeing kind of a, a rapid mature, maturing of, of that, that kind of cloud security ecosystem. And, and, and for, for products like XDrop, I'm, I'm just a huge believer in, in the power of, of the network for security because it's got these great properties that other sources of data don't have. Uh, it's as close to ground truth as you can possibly get, very hard to tamper with and impossible to turn off. With VPC traffic mirroring, we get the full power of network security, and it's really designed with the controls and kind of the, the IAM roles and such that, that you would expect for these, these security use cases, which I, uh, just great, great, great advance. So uh, it, along the, the discussion of transformation, one of the things Andy Jassy talked about is the, you know, the senior leadership, the CEOs need to be involved. Something we've been saying in the security industry for years, it's not only CEOs, the board is you know, talking about this uh, and, and it's there. So uh, you know, w w what are you seeing? Uh, you, know, you stated before that we haven't solved uh, security yet, uh, but so you know, bring us inside kind of the, yeah. the mindset of your customers today. Yes, and what's, you know, what's the angst and you know, what, where are we making progress? That's, that's a very interesting question. Uh, I, I, I'll probably be a little contrarian here as well, maybe not, but I, I think we see a, a, a lot of pressure is, is regulatory pressure. Um, you know, we're seeing a, a lot of new regulations uh, come out around data privacy and security. Uh, GDPR was you know, pretty transformative in terms of how organizations thought about that. Uh, I, I also think it's important that there are, co are consequences. I, I was worried that for a few years, data breaches were becoming so commonplace that, that people were getting kind of desensitized to it. Like, you know, there was once a time that if, when there was a massive data breach, kind of heads would roll, <laughs> and, uh, and there, was a, a sense of, uh, there was a sense of consequences all the way up into the C-suite. But the, a few years ago, I, I was starting to get concerned that people were, were getting a little lackadaisical, like, oh, oh just another data breach. Um, my perception is that the pendulum's swinging back again. I, I think uh, for, for truly massive data breaches, there, there really is a sense of brand. And I'm seeing the industry starting to demand better privacy. Um, the consumer, consumer industry is perhaps leading the way. I think, I think Apple's doing a very good job of, of actually selling privacy. So when you see um, the, the economics, I mean, we're, 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 it's a capitalist system, and when you see kind of the market economics align um, with the incentives, then, then that's when you actually see change. So, so I, I'm, I'm very, encouraged by the alignment of kind of the, the market economics for paying greater attention to privacy and, and security. All right, uh, 
want to give you a final word here. You, you said you'd like to have some contrarian viewpoints. <laughs> so, you know, the, the, the last question is just, you know, what would you like to kind of just educate the marketplace on uh, that maybe goes against uh, the common perception when it, when it comes to security in general, maybe network security specifically? Well, I, I'll, I'll probably just re reiterate w what I said earlier. You know, ne network security is a, a fundamental, you know, capability and a fundamental source of data. I, I think organizations pay a lot of attention to their log files. I think organizations uh, do invest in, in protection and prevention, but I think the ability to observe all of the uh, network communications and then the ability to detect suspicious behaviors and potential threats, bring it to your attention, take you through an investigative workflow, make sure that you're one click away from determining you know, whether uh, this requires an actual incident response and in some cases take an automated response. I think that is a very powerful solution and one that drastically increases an organization's you know, cybersecurity posture. So I would, I would always encourage, encourage organizations to invest there, regardless of whether it's our solution or somebody else's, I'm a huge believer in the space. All right, so Jesse, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, we know that the security industry still has lots, lots of work to do, so we look forward to catching Extra Hop uh, soon at another event, and we have lots of work to do to cover all the angles of this you know, sprawling ecosystem here at AWS reInvent. For Justin Warren, I'm Stu Miniman. Be back with lots more right after this, and thank you for watching theCUBE. Oh.